What does Mahatma Gautam Buddha say? Why did their envy grow larger than those three beggars? Leo Tolstoy's. It's a very famous story. It is said that in old Russia, the three beggars became very famous. They became so famous that the biggest priest there began to envy them. Because gradually, people stopped coming to the church. The crowd of people from the church completely disappeared. Now everyone started going to those three beggars. The chief priest there wondered who those three were who became saints in my presence. Because in Christianity, it is a tradition that until the church gives recognition to a person, they cannot become a saint. The priest started getting very worried because the popularity of the church among the people was decreasing day by day. But one day it reached its limit. The priest sat in the church all day, but not a single person came to the church. The priest couldn't control his anger. He decided that today I won't spare those three beggars. Today, I will teach them a lesson by making them follow me. He got ready in his complete priestly attire. He put on a golden crown on his head. He took a golden stick with the symbol of the chief priest in his hand and set off to meet those three. They used to stay on the other side of a large lake. The priest sat in a boat and reached the other side of the lake. After moving a little ahead, he saw three simple and ordinary people sitting under a big tree. They were sitting quietly under the tree. The priest went to them and asked, Are you those famous saints because of whom people have stopped coming to my church? Those three replied, No, no, we are not saints. We are not worthy of becoming saints. It is the people here who say that we are saints. I don't know who spread this false rumor which attracts crowds of people here. We keep telling them not to come, but the more we refuse, the more the crowd increases. We are tired of this crowd. This crowd does not interest us. We want to live in solitude. It's good that you have come. Now you save us from this crowd. Hearing this, the priest was not filled with joy. He started thinking, these are really innocent people. I will make them regret it. Today I will make them stand in a line. The priest asked, but what do you three do? They said, nothing. We just sit under this tree and pray to God. The priest asked, where is the Bible? The three of them bowed their heads. The priest asked, what happened? He said, now what should I tell you? We three are illiterate. We don't know how to read. Even if we keep a Bible, what will we do with it? Hearing this, the priest was pleased and thought to himself, they are illiterate, yet they have fooled so many people. I will expose them in front of the whole city. I will humiliate them. The priest asked, How do you guys pray? You must remember the prayers of your church, they said. And upon hearing this, the three of them bowed their heads again. The priest asked, What happened now? Why did you bow your heads again? They replied, We are feeling great shame while telling you that we don't even know how to pray. The priest exclaimed in astonishment, What? You don't even know how to pray? They didn't move their heads. The priest asked, How do you three pray then? They said, Your church's prayer is long and complicated. We illiterate fools couldn't remember it, and there is no meaning in reciting it incorrectly. So after much thought and contemplation, we created our own prayer. Upon hearing this, the priest shouted loudly, What? You have created your own prayer! Prayers are universal. They are written in the scriptures. They are thousands of years old. Jesus taught us how to pray to God, but you have created your own prayer. They said, we have made a huge mistake. Please forgive us. We illiterate people. We don't know anything. Now whatever prayer you teach us, we will pray that from today. We fall at your feet. We have made a big mistake. Please forgive us and teach us your prayer. But the priest's curiosity was aroused. He thought, let me see. What kind of prayer have they made? The priest said, first you guys recite your prayer to me. They said, no, Maharaj, there is no meaning in an illiterate fool's prayer. Please don't embarrass us anymore. Teach us your prayer. But the priest didn't agree. So, upon repeated insistence from the priest, they finally agreed to recite their prayer. They said, we thought a lot, contemplated a lot, but no prayer came to our minds. Then we remembered that in Christianity, God is believed to have three forms. So we made our prayer based on that. If you listen to our prayer, we will laugh at ourselves. After this, all three fell silent. The priest said, tell me, I won't laugh. They said, there are three forms of God. So we made a prayer that says, we are three, you are three, have mercy on us. Hearing this, even the serious priest burst into laughter and said, 
I have heard many prayers in my life, but never such a prayer. And he started thinking to himself, They are such fools. Today, I will teach them a lesson. They will come to me in the church. Those three will have to come to me. They said, Leave us alone. Teach us your prayer. We will continue to do the same today. The priest started teaching them the church's prayer. They said it once, and the priest repeated. They said it once again, and the priest repeated it for the third time. They said it once again, making sure they don't forget. The priest repeated it once more. They said it again, and the priest said, Don't worry, sometimes visit the church too. Slowly your lives will improve, and if you come every day, you will also learn the prayer. They said, Yes, as you command. The priest was very pleased. He said, Don't be afraid, come to the church. I will forgive you, and I will also seek forgiveness from others. They said, Thank you very much. You are a great person. The priest pondered. Well, one trouble is resolved. I brought these fools back on track. Sitting on his boat, he started going back. The boat had just reached the middle of the lake when they heard people shouting from behind. The priest and the boatman turned back to sea, and their eyes widened in shock. The three of them were running towards the water. They were running on the water as if it were solid ground. Seeing this, the stick of gold slipped from the priest's hand and fell into the water. This miracle had never been seen before, except by Jesus. The three of them were running. They reached the edge of the water and stood there calling out to the priest. They were running on the water like someone running on land. Seeing this, the priest bowed down and held onto their feet, saying, Please let me hear that prayer once more, I am forgetting it. He says it starts like this, and they say it starts like that. But I say it starts like this. The debate has begun among the three of them. Now whether we argue or pray, please let us hear that prayer once more, they said. The priest bowed down, caught hold of their feet and said, Forget everything that has been said so far. Forget everything. Your prayer is superior. It has won and mine has lost. Your prayer is the best. It is the best because it has been heard. And the truth is that from now on, I will also pray like yours. I made a mistake by underestimating your prayer while my faith was once in it. It was my weak prayer. Therefore, forgive me. It will be a great favor. These three beggars kept saying, Please, let us hear your prayer once more. But the priest silently lowered his head and left. Please note that the translation provided may not capture the nuance and poetic elements of the original text. If our prayer is true, sincere from the heart, then it will surely be heard by the divine. Even if it's just a few words, why shouldn't a prayer be simple? From the story of those three sages, we learn that we should not do anything with the intention of showing off, no matter what we do. Whenever we undertake any task, our whole soul should be immersed in it. Our complete dedication should be towards that work. If we can perform every task with such devotion, then success is certain in every endeavor, just like it happened with those three sages. They offered their prayers with such a deep sense of surrender that it was not their prayer, but their souls that prayed. Their prayer became so genuine that even the divine couldn't resist listening to it.